Welcome to the Rotary Membership Action Plan session number six, Become an Irresistible Club. Before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge Martin Luther King Jr. Day for all our attendees in the U.S. MLK Day is designated as a national day of service to encourage all Americans to volunteer to improve their communities. So thank you for being here this evening and taking a step towards improving your communities through growing your Rotary Club. And now, without further ado, let's welcome to the stage President nominee for Rotary International, Stephanie Urchik. Thank you so much, Andy and family of Rotary. Good evening. I am so excited to be a part of this particular webinar because of the topic. You know, my presidential aide, past district governor Tom Gump and I have been speaking about club culture for more than two years now. Uh, we do so around the world virtually and also when we can in person because it's just really such an important topic. If you've been paying attention to Rotary in, uh, um, information, uh, especially satisfaction surveys, you know that the number one reason for membership decline is club culture. I want you to think for a minute about the things that you do outside of Rotary. Some of you might be avid golfers, or maybe you're into um, going to casinos, or maybe it's retail therapy that, that gets you excited, or maybe cultural events, going to concerts. Think about what it is about that particular experience that keeps make you going back. In my case, it's watching professional football. Those of you who know me well know that I'm a Steelers fan. And, you know, I like going to Steeler games and I spend that money to buy those tickets. And I like the atmosphere. I like being around other fans and I like to wear the black and gold jerseys. I find value in that experience. And that's why I keep going back. And we do the same thing when we approach Rotary meetings and Rotary events. For those of us who keep going back, it's because we find value. You know, about four years ago, I started using a phrase in my presentations about membership, and that phrase is simply irresistible. And about the same time, a past district governor from Canada, Louise Horn, started using the phrase as well. Now she was using it in written information and I was using it in presentations, but we were both talking about the fact that if we create rotary experiences and rotary meetings that are simply irresistible, then membership will take care of itself. Our challenges of membership will be handled because with a simply irresistible club, people are attracted. They look and say, what's going on over there? That really looks important and fun and I wanna be a part of that. And for those people who are part of our meetings and experience, they say the same thing. This is so fabulous. I wanna to continue to do that. So tonight we have several experts, Rotarian experts who are gonna share information with you that are gonna answer some of those questions you may have. For instance, how do you know if your club is irresistible? Or what makes a club irresistible? Or how do you go about transforming a club to make it irresistible? Or maybe find a different club? Lots of different questions are floating around the topic of simply irresistible. But for now, let me turn things back over to my great friend, past district governor, Art McQueen. Art? Thank you, Stephanie. Good evening, Rotary. I first met our next two presenters in 2015 at the Zone 34 seminar in Jacksonville. One of those two gentlemen uh, chose to offer up his process in obtaining members in a breakout. I was leading as then a Rotary coordinator for Zone 34, and I've got to tell you that I absolutely disagreed with what this individual was, uh, was telling me. But by the time he was done presenting, I was sold. No surprise, as both these gentlemen make a living in the insurance and financial services sector, and both are very good at what they do. Now, some might say they and their club are successful due to their sheer force of personality. 
or perhaps that small token gift of legal moonshine they provide to each of their visiting speakers. My response would be to tell you that as district membership chairs, they have had a positive district membership growth in five of their six years served. And currently their district 6910 leads all districts, not only in our zones 33 and 34, but in the entirety of North America in net membership growth. They make Rotary and Rotary clubs irresistible. Rotarians from around the zones, please sit back, take some notes, enjoy the show, Welcome the irresistible district membership chairs and my friends, Scott Yoakum and Pepper Pettit to our webinar. Gentlemen, take it away. Well, thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Art. Good evening, everybody. I'm Scott. And I'm Pepper. And tonight we're gonna to talk about how to make your club an irresistible, hey. What, what, what is it, what, what is it? Hey, what, I, I heard you were gonna talk about I, irresistible I, I, and I wanna be irresistible. Well, I, well, I heard you were, you were Mike. This is Mike Berg, everybody. Mike. Boy, welcome tonight. We're not going to show you how to be irresistible. We're going to show the Rotary Clubs how to be irresistible. Oh! So stick around. Go have a seat. Okay. And by the time we're done tonight, you're going to know how to make Rotary Clubs irresistible, well, too. Well, I hope you pass the audition. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us, Mike. Well, everybody, once again, thank you for joining us. And our topic tonight is how to make your club irresistible. That's right, Scott. But we know that most of the people we're talking to belong to members of really good clubs. Tonight, we wanna to share some ideas with you that can help you maybe make your clubs a little bit better. Well, and by doing so, like Stephanie said, it's gonna assist you in not only attaining and growing new members, but retaining our existing members, Pepper. Well, if I was in the audience, Scott, one of the first questions I would ask is, uh, what is an irresistible well, club? Th that's a great question, Pepper. And again, as we've done all this work through the membership action plan to bring new folks to our Rotary Club, it doesn't do a Rotary Club any good, Pepper, to bring these new five-star recruits in if the club isn't ready to receive them. We have to be ready when we bring these great prospects in. If we are not ready to receive them, all of our hard work to get them to the Rotary meeting is for not, Pepper. It's, it's a wasted opportunity. Well, what's the first thing that a club needs to do to get ready, Scott? Well, we need to actually, these are some things that a club can do next week in their club. Um, you actually need to go to your club and ask not the president, not the board members, but your club members, Pepper, a few tough questions. Well, I really think that, you know, the assessment is, is the first step. And you mentioned it, concentrating on each individual member of each individual club is really important because we want to know what the total membership feels about their club and how they assess it. Well, and that's, that's all that matters, Pepper. What, it doesn't matter what our perception is, it's what our club members' perception is. Um, there's some tough questions that we need to ask. And the first of the tough questions- we're well, gonna, What are some of those tough questions, well, Scott? One of the first questions you need to ask your club is, number one, do you love your club? Wow. That's a tough question, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's logically it follows that, uh, uh, you know, another tough question would be, uh, would you join your club again? Well, and, and if you have enough going on in every club and every member feels like something's really going on, like Stephanie just said, you know what? I think if each member was given a choice, they would join their club again. Absolutely tough question, but we need to know. Um, Pepper, the, I hear you use a phrase all the time when we visited clubs. You use a phrase and said, is your club must-see TV? What do you mean by must-see TV, Pepper? Well, it, it, it's kind of like this. It's, it's, it's that each member is really excited to go to the meeting or fundraiser or social or service project. And they want to get there early. They really do <laughs> because do. They don't want to miss anything. Uh, everything your club does is not only an event, but they know it's a happening and they just don't want to miss it. And that's exactly what Stephanie just said. Make it a happening. Make it exciting. You know, we talked about, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess what you said was, uh, you know, uh, you know, what is must see TV? Well, there's another phrase that you use all the time. It's called the cheers effect. 
Uh, what do you mean by that, Scott? Well, if you recall the popular TV show, my gosh, it's probably back in the 1980s, the, the theme song from Cheers was, you want to go to a place where everybody knows your name. And Rotary is the same place. We love Rotary because we go there and everybody knows our name. But if you take it a step further, Pepper, we don't want to just know their name. We want to know who they are. We want to know what makes them tick. We want them to know who we are and what makes us tick. So we call it the Cheers Effect, where everybody can know your name. Does your club have that atmosphere and environment? And that's what we want to, tough question we need to ask them. That's really important, Scott. Well, and, and so the Irresistible Club, Pepper, when we were doing this and we were looking at it, we said, oh my gosh, you cannot spell irresistible without it. Pepper, what is the it factor? And I've heard you use this in business um, in, in a rotary for several years. Well, the it factor is something special about people or even groups. Uh, what it means is that they're not just special, they're extra special. And groups, including Rotary Clubs, can be extra special. Uh, it's really important when we talk about the it factor to kind of emphasize that groups can also have the it factor. The it factor is a unique and noteworthy quality that people have, like I said before, mm -hmm. but groups can have. Uh, it's a presence. You have it or you don't. But it's something you can work for, Scott. Um, it's something that you can achieve. Um, a club needs to have enthusiasm, self-confidence. They need to be relational, not transactional. What do you mean by that, Pepper? Well, what it means is that you're not checking blocks. You're building relationships, you're building connections, you're building interactions, and in turn, you're building partners that become part of your family. That's what a Rotary Club is. And we do something else, too. Irresistible clubs always make it about others. Their members make it about others. And as a Rotary Club, we make it that, you know, it's all about somebody else, not us. A Rotary Club can be all these things, and the it factor helps you be all these things. Well, I, I agree, Pepper. And again, you ask your club members these tough questions. Do you love your club? Would you join your club again? Is your club must-see TV? If it's not must-see TV, what do we need to do to make it must-see TV? And you have the cheers effect. Does everybody know your name? Is it, as Pepper said, your Rotary family? And then the toughest intangible of all is the it factor. Does your club have the it factor. If you answered yes to these tough questions, congratulations, your club is probably an irresistible club. If you cannot answer yes to all of these tough questions, your club is close and we're gonna share with you folks here this evening, how to get your club over the hump, how to make them truly irresistible. Well, Scott, now that we know what an irresistible club is, how do you become one? Well, like anything, Pepper, it's not gonna be easy, but it's gonna be simple. We're going to focus on three main areas. They are simple. And as we like to say, anything we ever share with folks, Pepper, we want this as something they can implement right away. They can take this back to the club level and they can implement it at next week's Rotary Club. So we're going to keep it simple. So, Pepper, what's the first area we're going to focus on, on how to make your club irresistible now that we know what an irresistible club is? Well, I think the first thing that we want to talk about when we talk about irresistible clubs is the atmosphere and environment. Everything a club does, whether it be in meetings, whether it be in socials, whether it be in uh, <laughs> fundraisers or service projects, it's that atmosphere and that environment that is so important. Well, in describing the atmosphere and environment, once again, we're gonna keep it simple here this evening, if everybody's okay with that. Um, and we're gonna appeal to our five senses. What do you mean by that, Scott? Well, we're all familiar with what our five senses are. We're going to go over the five senses one by one. And this is actually a guide, Pepper, that can assist the club in becoming an irresistible club. Well, that sounds pretty simple. Where do we start? Well, we're going to start with what we see. Um, or the first sense is sight. What's the first thing we see when we walk into a Rotary meeting, Pepper? Um, is your meeting welcoming? Is it professional? Um, is it a good location for everybody? And then the next thing our eyes go to is the signage and banners. 
They need to communicate our brand in an appealing way. They need to be professional. They need to be new. They, we're going to attract young people. We need to appeal to them. So look at your signage. Look at it maybe like you're walking into the room for the very first time and see, does this fit the site test? Does this match my eyes for the image we want for Rotary? Well, that makes a lot of sense. Well, we use a play on words, but what's the next of the well, five sentences? I, I got a little more to talk about on site, Pepper. Oh, uh, okay. Go ahead. Well, it, it's the first impression. When you walk in the club, again, this is your eyes are focusing on this. Are there smiles, Pepper? Um, oh, very important. Is it a friendly atmosphere? Um, remember, Pepper, whose responsibility is it when somebody walks into a Rotary? Is it the welcoming committee? No. Who, who's it's it? It's every Pepper? single member's responsibility. They need to show that we are welcoming, that we have a great culture, like Stephanie said. We need to show it. And the way we show it, first of all, is our smiles and our friendly atmosphere and our friendly approach. Absolutely. That's everything, Pepper. Again, as they say, first impressions matter. What's the next of the five cents? Well, the next one is is the sounds. Um, is you noticed when we came on here this evening, um, we were playing music. We were playing simply irresistible. Weren't yeah. We? And and you know what music does, Pepper? It, it really a, it, it really excites you. It sets a tone. Think about when you go to a convention or if you go to a sporting event. If we go to Pittsburgh Steeler game. They're playing music to get us fired up. Oh they? yeah, they sure and, are. So your Rotary Club is the same way. Music sets the tone. It can really create a lot of Hey, something's really happening here. Like like Stephanie said, it creates the excitement and enthusiasm are essential. Pepper, you know a little something about enthusiasm, don't you? You mean enthusiasm, right? Well, that's not quite what I mean, Pepper. Oh, you mean enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, I think you got it, Pepper. And, you know, enthusiasm is everything, but that's one of the sounds that we hear. Is there some excitement going on here? Is, is it being... Hey, I must see TV. Is this exciting? Yeah, it's it, it means everything. If you have an exciting club, you're real close to an irresistible club. If you have enthusiasm, you're even closer to having a club. But, you know, when we talk about sounds, one of the most important things that a Rotary Club needs to have is great programs and great speakers. Exactly. Um, if you look at speakers, they need to be interesting. They need to be topical. They need to be fun. They need to be noteworthy. And when I say noteworthy, yeah, they need to be noteworthy. But also they need to be something else. They need to bring information, content, and topics that where our members will take notes because they're actually learning something new. Regardless of what kind of professional career they have, they got something new and exciting to listen to. It goes back and to must-see TV, doesn't it? Without a doubt. And the word will get out. The word will get out to people that are not in our club right now. And guess what? They'll want to attend. And guess what? If we ask them, they'll join. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, the next sense we're going to talk about, Pepper, is taste. Oh, wow. Well, we all know how rotary, I mean, food is really important and it's got to taste good. <laughs> well, we agree with that. Um, but taste can also mean something else for a rotary club. We need to present a professional environment at all times, at all events. An irresistible club, Pepper, should always be in good taste. Yes. The next sense is smell. And this is another, a little bit of an intangible, but when you know it, you can smell it, can't you, Pepper? Without a doubt. That's right. I'll tell you what, when you walk into a room, you can smell whether there's something really going on. You can smell you can smell the, the enthusiasm. You can smell the it factor. Yeah, you can smell the it factor and you can smell the excitement. Anytime you walk in to an irresistible club full of irresistible Rotarians. How long does it take you to smell it, Pepper? If you walked in a club, how long would it take you to say, boy, this club has it seconds just a matter of seconds well because you can smell contagious can't you pepper no question um if you look at something like what you just said scott you can smell contagious enthusiasm you can smell contagious excitement you can smell the fact that something's going on and it does just take seconds. Absolutely. Um, well, the last of the senses, um, again, that we need to be aware of is touch. And touch in includes physical hugs. It's okay to hug the yep. Rotary. In Rotary, it is. It, it, handshakes. 
greetings, meetings, introducing folks. What else does touch include, Pepper? Well, this is a little extra set of ingredients. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like we call it nice touches. And nice touches are things like you send a personal email, not a business type email, but a personal email. You send personal texts to fellow members. This can be informational, but it can also be personal. Uh, you know, we kind of look at phone calls as maybe text is better, but actually phone calls really resonate with our members and they resonate with anybody. It's a way to reach out and touch somebody. Uh, we talk about, you know, not just phone calls, but what we need to do is maybe send out some personal notes. All of us in business understand the power of a personal note. Very powerful. It is extraordinarily powerful, and it's extraordinarily powerful with Rotary members. And also, we need to recognize our Rotary members when they're active in the community and receive some award or uh, some certificate, or they're recognized in some kind of way we need to emphasize that and reinforce that because that's really important and it's important to them and they feel proud that we recognize them. Well, so, so touch is important. So if you look at the five senses, just to review, and I guess we could write it right here on your hand. I didn't, but I could have written it you right You didn't? Here. I no, thought I you did. But, okay. but blue is that your checklist for your club is sight, sound, taste, smell, and touch. And if your club and fill in the gaps, have an easel in front of the room and say, what do we need to do to fill in these five gaps, our five senses for our Rotary Club? And it's, it's just like a great recipe, Pepper. If I'm making a stew and I leave out a few of the ingredients, the stew's not going to taste very good, is it? No, it's this not. This is the Rotary recipe for Irresistible Club. Don't leave out any ingredient if you want to become an Irresistible Club, because all five of these senses are important. All five of these things matter. No, it's not written on my hand. Oh, okay. I, I didn't look at my chair again. It, it wasn't. So um, that's the first. Again, it's not going to be easy to prepare the Rotary stew, but it's going to be simple with just a little extra effort, and it's going to be worth it. Pepper, what's the second area of focus to become an Irresistible Club? Well, Scott, it's about relationships. Relationships and relationships. You know, the reason why most people join Rotary is because of relationships. Absolutely, had a relationship with somebody. Unfortunately, one of the main reasons people leave Rotary also is because lack of relationships. Engaging new and existing members on a firmer and more lasting basis, again, become simply irresistible. To use a, a phrase that we're using tonight here, Pepper. Yes, that's exactly true. Of course, one thing I'd like to point out, we're always talking about engagement. If you want to engage somebody, though, build a relationship. That's the easiest way to engage somebody. Well, uh, here are a few components. As Pepper and I have been to many, many clubs. One of the common denominators when, when we go to clubs, not that we're evaluating clubs, but we're, we're making mental notes. One of the common denominators that all these, quote, unquote, irresistible clubs have was, again, back to the term you just said, Pepper, relationships relationships, relationships. You may have heard this before, but we want to say it again because it's really important. Again, these are some of the relationship things that a club can do. The first one we want to share with you, have a club environment where members can develop a mutual trust in an atmosphere of integrity that promotes, and I know this is an overused cliche, but we say, I got your back, Pepper. When we talk about our Rotary family and the, the people that we have, not only in our own Rotary clubs, but our Rotary family all across the zones, we know that they not only have our back, but then some pepper. And that's a great feeling to know that people actually have your back. Well, you're right, Scott. And having your back, it's foremost. You know, when people will stand beside you, no matter whether you may be right or wrong, it is so important. You know, to have a club that allows you to fulfill the need for your individuality, if the club really thinks that's important, guess what? The club is allowing you to be the best you you can be. Very important. Um, folks, also have a club that builds your self-esteem and confidence and gives your members the respect of others. 
you also need to have a club where you can have the opportunity to receive professional and personal development that can apply to all aspects of your life. In fact, I think this is an underutilized value of Rotary. Here we have a lot of seasoned professionals just like yourself, and a young professional can come to, can come to Rotary every single week and sit next to you, and you can share information that, that maybe can help them in their professional career of things that you've learned along the way. This is an underutilized value of, of what Rotary can bring as we try to attract new and younger people. Well, without a doubt, Scott, I mean, if you look, mentoring goes both ways. They can probably help you. Yeah. Out. They probably could. Um, to quote the great Art McQueen, and he is great. Pepper, yes, he um, is great. Uh, Art Without McQueen, we learned this from Art. He says, members of your club are your customers. Are, there, are they getting a return on their investment? And you just can't assume that. The only way to find out for sure if they're getting a return on their investment, Pepper, is to ask them. The next question we need to ask them, are they getting value for their time and money that they're investing in Rotary? And again, this is very, very important because why, Pepper? Well, remember... Our <laughs> customers are always right, and they're very, very important. If we don't have any customers, we don't have any Rotarians. And Rotary that's right. right. Like any business, Pepper. I think one other thing that's really important for irresistible clubs is to have meaningful and heartwarming ser service projects. I mean, things that you really want to get involved in where you can make a difference. And those projects will allow us to realize that we are all part of something that's bigger than us. Absolutely. Pepper, do you mind if I share a quick story? We, yeah, I recently ahead, was at a service project and a former Rotarian shows up at the service project and she had been a great Rotarian for about five years. And she had some, circum some life circumstances. Her husband passed away. Her business wasn't doing so well. And she came back to Rotary. And her name is Chris. And I said, Chris, can you tell me why you came back? And you know what her answer was? You know what? She said, I miss the people. I miss the relationships. I miss my Rotary family. And and she's back now. And everybody was so excited that she was back with our club. Scott, can you tell me what club that was? Well, it, it was our club, Pepper. It, it, and she's a member of our club. And she's back. But the reason she came back was because, of, to quote her, it was all she missed the relationships, Pepper. I guess that relationships really are the tie that binds. I think so. As we know, Rotary's motto is service above self. Scott and I both feel that it means two things, service to our fellow members and service to our community. Service to our community is also about relationships, relationships, relationships. Now, absolutely, Pepper. And this, that's the final area of focus we're going to discuss tonight. We've discussed atmosphere and environment. We've discussed relationships um, with our folks that are in Rotary. But relationships with our community are our final area of focus here tonight, Pepper. With effective service projects and public image endeavors, let's face it, Rotary is the tip of the spear. In every community, we have a Rotary Club. They really are. If you want to get something done, guess what? You don't ask any other organization but Rotary. Well, and it's important that we make that connection with our community. It doesn't do us to any good to, to say, hey, we're going to go do this or we're going to do that. We need to have a pulse of what's going on in that respective community. What are their needs, Pepper? What service projects do we need to perform that are specific to our respective communities? Because guess what? They look to Rotary for answers. Um, they know that, to put it bluntly, we have solutions. And remember, if we've developed the relationships with the folks in the community, we can adhere to their needs in the community. We can do what we're supposed to do, and that's have service of ourselves, not only with our fellow Rotarians, but with our community. And when we talk about how important our communities are to be in an irresistible club, you know, to quote the great George Robertson Burnett, he's great too? Yes, he is, okay. without a doubt. <laughs> if your members love your club, you have a great club. If your members and your community love your club, you have an irresistible club. Hmm. Well said. Give someone the gift of Rotary. Just ask them to join your club. Make that person more than just a member of Rotary of your Rotary club. Allow them to not only be in Rotary, but to have Rotary in them 
Can you say that one more time, Pepper? Say, say that again one more time. That, that's a great statement. Yeah, don't allow, you know, uh, them to only just be in Rotary, but to have Rotary in them. If we accomplish that, every Rotary club will be irresistible. Pepper, here's Webster's Dictionary definition of irresistible. It is as follows. Impossible to refuse, oppose, or avoid because it's too attractive and strong. Gee whiz, that sounds like an irresistible club to me. Well, if we do all those things, Pepper, keep it simple. Put a focus at the club level, at the member level. Find out, again, what they want. We will become irresistible. And all the great things we're accomplishing with this MAP program and all the great Rotarians that we are bringing into Rotary, we will not only bring in, well, Stephanie said, people want to come and join us, but we'll keep them all too, Pepper. And Rotary all over the world will become irresistible. Very good. Thank you, Pepper. Now back to you, George. Thank you so much, guys. What a great presentation from all three of our presenters tonight. What a pleasure to have Rotary International President, President nominee Stephanie Urchik with us. I mean, Stephanie's no, no stranger to us, but as she prepares for world, worldwide stardom, you know, it's great that she's found the time to be with us tonight. Really appreciate it. And what about these two guys? You know, there's great double acts, you know, in cartoons, it's Tom and Jerry and old movies. It's uh, it's uh, Laurel and Hardy and we have Batman and Robin with Marvel. But in Rotary, we have Scott and Pepper. Thanks guys, that was just absolutely great. So keep your questions coming because we have got some time. Uh, and I'll start off uh, with a question uh, for Stephanie, if you don't mind, uh, Stephanie. Uh, someone would like to know, how important do you feel surveys are uh, to get feedback from our members? I think surveys are really important because um, it does two things for us. First of all, it gives us an opportunity to get information. You know, people, people can answer and, and respond to how they feel about something. But the second important thing it does is it gives people the chance to feel heard. That's how we get input and buy-in. So even if we don't use anything at all that comes through on a particular survey, the fact that the person had an opportunity to say how they feel, to provide some information is what creates buy-in. So when you're thinking about transforming your club culture, and Scott and Pepper, you had some absolutely great ideas. When you think about those, those things, it's really going to be important to have spark plugs in the club, people who are going to jump on that bandwagon. And so you want that buy-in. So surveys can be very important. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you, Samuel Hall, for that question. I have a question for Scott and Pepper. Uh, we understand from what you were saying, how I, you mean about walking into a club and getting, getting that feeling of, of energy. How would you feel that an old traditional club, and we all know them, and as I know you were a lot of clubs, you've seen these older traditional clubs, how could they quickly make a transformation to create that energy in the room and maybe get rid of some of that uh, uh, traditional staleness? Okay, well, I'm going to start off, Scott, real quick. It is absolutely unbelievable what a smile does. If you just have every person in the room smile when there's a guest, it just is contagious. And then you walk up, you shake their hand, and you start asking them questions about who they are. And be really interested, because remember, it's about them. Just doing those few things can change the entire atmosphere and environment about what's going on. Well, and as Stephanie said, you get a couple spark plugs that create that environment right from the get-go. And that does become contagious. Everybody's like, hey, wait a minute. I want to smile. I want to be a part of this too. Um, and as you said earlier, Pepper, everybody's a member of the welcoming committee, not just the designated welcoming committee. It's, it's every member, club member's responsibility. And little by little, George, that probably would not happen overnight. But again, when three or four or five or 10 people get on board, you can change the dynamic of a club pretty darn quick. And Scott and Pepper, I loved your idea about using music. Now, I'm not talking about music from the 1920s and the 1930s, but I'm talking about music that, you know, energizes people. Well, you know, when you walk into an environment and there's that kind of upbeat music playing, you can't help to, but feel the same way. So I really like that example that you had about using music. That's absolutely great, guys. I, I, it actually follows on. 
Jim Kleinman would like to know what type of music do you think that you should be playing? You know, what kind of inspiring music? So I'll, I'll open that up to the three of you because you all have opinions on that. One thing we do, George, um, when we have a speaker, um, we had Tiffany, I, you, a lot of you may have heard her, she calls herself the Rotary Geek, came to our mm -hmm. Rotary Club, does a fantastic job. And before Tiffany spoke, we asked her, what do you want your walk-up music to be? And she kind of looked at me kind of funny. What do you mean by walk-up music? And if you go to a baseball game, before whomever comes to the plate, they have their walk-up music. And Tiffany, Tiffany told us she was a um, South Carolina Gamecock fan. So we had the, the theme song from South Carolina playing when she walked up. And boy, did she feel sky high. And then she proceeded to tell us that um, she was engaged to, to Bill. And so she walked off. We played Marry Me, Bill. And she was she had to get her fiancé on, on Zoom and say, oh, my gosh, look what this club did for me. So we find out what our speakers want their walk-up music to make, and we make it exciting for them. Um, the background music when people are walking in, we always have – you know, I would call it like, you know, music like happy and feel, mm -hmm. you know, feel good music. And then once everybody gets there, we kind of turn the music down a little bit because we want the people to have meaningful conversation before the Rotary starts to meet. And they, we don't want them shouting at each other, but it sets a tone and sets a vibe every single time. If you're not using music, use it. You know, right before Scott and Pepper started to talk this evening, you heard they played Simply Irresistible, and that put us all in the right frame of mind to think about what they were going to share with us. So I, I love those ideas about thinking about the music and asking your speakers. And, you know, you can do a Google search and find happy music. It's really simple to do. You have a Spotify now. It's pretty darn easy. You just look at yeah, it. Yeah. There's plenty of resources. Uh, Stephanie, I wonder if I could ask you, as you and Tom go around, and this is uh, slightly more on the new club side, but as you go around, uh, I'm sure you see uh, that uh, there's some resistance in some clubs to setting up new clubs in the fact that they feel that they may be creating their own competitors. Um, what advice would you give to uh, club leaders who or district leaders who meet that kind of resistance? Well, the, the, the advice that I would share is just forget that resistance idea because it's not true. If anything, it energizes the club. I'll tell you a story about my own club. You know, last year at this time, we had 30 members. And I started talking with our club leaders about the concept of satellites or, you know, different clubs. And, and we zeroed in and and we looked at the impact model. Now the impact model is when a group of people are interested in rotary and uh, the good service that we do, but they're not so interested in coming to meetings. So we started to recruit for that. And um, our club president is a real gung-ho energizer bunny and he went after people in our community. And you know, in one night, we inducted 15 new members into our club through the impact model. Now think about how long it would take you to bring in 15 new members into your club. But in one night we did that. So these, these folks go out and they do service twice a month. If they want to come to our club meetings, they can. If they want to come to our so socials, they can and they do. But they don't have any meeting. If they want to go out after they're done with service, they can go, you know, have a beverage or pizza. That's fine. But what is so great is they're full Rotary members. They pay full dues. They have every benefit of being a Rotarian and they've become active members of our club. So it really does the opposite of what people think. It really energizes. Our club members are so excited because we're invited to their service projects and we're mixing and mingling with them. So it really does exactly the opposite, George. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And I see there is a question about traditional clubs. You know, traditional clubs are great clubs. Nobody's actually downplaying a traditional club, uh, you know, if that's what the community requires. But we have a lot of clubs that moved on to this impact and various other aspects. Rotary has opened up the capability for us to have all types of different clubs. And I think that's what, uh, if the, I hope that explains to whoever asked that. Uh, one final question, because we're going to be out of time, and uh, Scott and Pepper, uh, you understand the importance of the club getting involved in the community. Uh, but how uh, have you seen getting the community involved in the club? Do you have any advice on that? And, and Stephanie, uh, perhaps you could weigh in on that also. Uh, Stephanie, your ladies first. <laughs> well, okay. Um, you know, one of the things that um, we tend to do here in, in, in my area is look for 
um, places in the community where there are organizations or group that share our Rotary values. You know, one of the things that's on the front burner right now for Rotary is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Well, in our area, we have a, a company, Columbia Gas of Maryland and Pennsylvania, also very, very interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we began some discussions with that organization about possibly co-sponsoring some things and partnering, you know, um, bringing in some speakers in the local high school. We even talked about the possibility of getting some international food trucks at one of our local malls so that people could, you know, um, try different kinds of cuisine. So, so for us, it was looking for organizations that shared similar Rotary values and reaching out to them. It's also a great way to, to look at the possibility of a corporate club. You know, if, if, if the company is big enough and there are people within the organization who share Rotary's values, that would be a great opportunity to have a club form in that corporation. That's just a couple of thoughts. How about you guys? Thank you. Scott Pepper? Good thought. Um, I agree, Stephanie. One phrase that we use all the time is, is when we invite other groups like that in who are like-minded groups. One plus one can equal three. And, and, and I know that sounds a little cliche, but when we take the power of Rotary and the brand of Rotary and the power of all of us together with an outside force as well, one plus one can equal three in your community. We, we use that phrase all the time. Thank um, you, guys. I, I just, can I add yes, one? Go, go ahead. Yes, please, Pepper. We reach out to leaders in the community, people of influence, and either ask them to come to a meeting or come to a fundraiser or a function or a social. Maybe not to become members, but trying to build a relationship with them because relationships are so important to these key people. Pepper, what's that phrase you use? We need your help. Yeah, there's a there's a question, and, and this has been taught for years. It's a disarming phrase. George, we need your help. We can't do it without you. I'm serious. It's disarming, <laughs> and, you know what they and say, it works and every, you know what time. They every time. Yes, what do you need? What do you need? It, that's that's <laughs> absolutely wonderful. We need you. You know, that, I, I love that. I, I was brought to this about the community because two ladies who are not in Rotary said to me, we love our Rotary Club. And the fact that they used the word our, I just thought was fabulous. They held ownership of the Rotary Club and they loved it. Um, one of the no, we need to get them to join us. I just I want to separate. say this one thing, okay, real quick. Separate. Stephanie, will you forgive me? This is kind of important, but it's something we do for our Thanksgiving dinner when we feed 600 to 650 people. Uh, we invite members of influence in the community to help us. They help serve, they help prepare the food, and they are named Rotary, but they're volunteers. We, so let, them, one we, let, night, them, we let them inside the castle. We let them inside the castle. It's remarkable what happens. And we just let it go and let it happen. Sorry. Thank yeah. you, George. Are we in Rotary Jail, George? We've yes. been in Rotary Jail. No, you're not in Rotary Jail, but I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, our wonderful director, Jeremy, uh, so that he can thank you properly uh, and see us out. So over to you, Jeremy. Well, thanks, George. Wow, what a great map session. Uh, Scott and Pepper, thank you for getting us thinking about what makes an irresistible club and sharing some great ideas to make our clubs just that. The two of you just epitomize the energy and enthusiasm that we all need to radiate when we walk through the door of our club. So when we go to our next meetings, let's bring that energy with us. It's definitely contagious in the best possible way. It's also great, of course, to have uh, Rotary International President nominee Stephanie with us today. And, and as Stephanie says, our club experiences and culture literally determine whether our members will stay or leave. So let's invest the time and the effort to make sure our clubs and members feel this phenomenon. Okay. Those of you at our International Assembly last week in Orlando will have smelt, felt, and touched that very enthusiasm and energy. And the President Dominique Stephanie was there talking about irresistible clubs, of course, and as well as Rotary International President-elect Gordon, who introduced his theme of encouraging us to create hope in the world. Um, and talked about the importance of well-being and mental health to our communities and members at this most challenging of times. In other words, making our clubs caring and supportive and inclusive places to be is irresistible also to our members. And President Jen was there, of course, continued to encourage us 
So imagine the impact we can have in our communities by creating lasting change. And this, of course, also creates irresistible clubs. Rotary International Trustee like Barry Ratton was there and challenged us to some very audacious goals for our foundation giving next year. So what ties this all together? Well, if we create irresistible clubs, we'll engage and attract new and existing members. We'll grow Rotary and be able to deliver greater impact in our communities and create more hope in the world through our club projects and programs. We'll increase our pool of potential donors so we can continue to do more good in the world through our amazing foundation. It's a win-win-win situation. So I hope you got the message tonight. Let's be simply irresistible. And to help you do this, we have some upcoming webinars we are excited to tell you about as well. On January the 23rd at 6 p.m., the Zone 34 Rotary Public Image team has received many requests for an overview of the Facebook business manager. So we're thrilled to announce that Carolyn Mudgett from Rotary District 6970 is going to provide an overview for exactly that. And in that session, you'll learn about Facebook basics and the business manager side of things and also how to publish schedule and repurpose content, as well as a whole range of other things as well. And then on January 24th as well at 6 p.m., uh, there'll be Zone 33's public image team who will be presenting collaborating with local media partners, a very important topic to share our Rotary stories and tell us how to do that and get the attention of the local media partners in doing so. The Rotary Foundation team zone for Zone 34 will also feature projects of impact. So join them on February 23rd at 6 p.m. to learn about projects that are being done by our clubs and the amazing impact that's being made. And on February 20th, our very next Membership Action Plan MAP session. It is going to be the premiere, the launch of our MAP website and database that we've all been eagerly awaiting. So please join this session. You'll be able to see how we're going to provide you with the tools and really valuable resources to your club and district leaders to help us measure, monitor, and motivate and to create more irresistible clubs. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Join us again next time. Have a wonderful month and let's keep being simply irresistible. Good night.